Hello St. Thomas Academy and welcome to the Cadet Football Channel. My name is Mike Maxwell, I'm your host and to my left as always is head football coach Dan O'Brien. Welcome to the show. Great coach, thanks to be back. Yeah, yeah. The ninth, ninth, tenth show that we've been doing yeah, so we're, we got awesome. a little little, uh, little uh, longevity going here. So uh, coach let's talk about uh, last week's uh, game. You had a, another nice win. A, Duplicate repeat victory over uh, over Apple Valley, 49-0. Give us your assessment of the game. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I don't know that I've ever had a game where, uh, first of all, you don't often play a team twice uh, in one year, but to play them twice one year have the exact same score uh, is fairly unique and, and I think uncommon. But uh, first of all, it's a, it's a it's it's a another win for the boys. It's a, it's a first-round playoff win, which is fantastic. Number one, we're in the playoffs. And number two, to be able to get that first win and then win win it in a way that we could get a lot of kids in the game that was the good news the bad news is mike again for the second week in a row we had some ball security issues and we certainly have to get those cleaned up before friday and kind of figure out why that's happening to us i think we counted up we had six mishandled balls this week between uh center and quarterback exchange uh, fumbles in the backfield or interceptions there were six different balls um, that were mishandled. Four of those were turnovers. Two we were able to get back. So, again, a big concern of ours. In the last two games, uh, we've had eight turnovers. Uh, and interestingly enough, we have not punted in the last two games, so we've either scored or yeah. turned it over. So, uh, again, a frustration that we have to get fixed this week. And, you know, obviously moving forward uh, against Hastings, who's 7 and 2. We won't be able to turn the ball over four times and come out and be right. successful in a game like that. Right. Again, your defense is 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 playing tremendous. Uh, another shutout. Um, did did you expect more from Apple Valley? Again, you know, you, you mentioned it before. You know, it's unusual to play a team twice. Typically, when you play them that second time, there's a, a, a kind of a decrease in that score, even a, even if it is still a blowout. Did you expect a little bit more from Apple Valley, or, or, or are they just done for the season? Well, I, I think there's a couple things going on. I think they, they maybe were ready to be done a little bit, but uh, what happened, as I saw it, is that they had to turn over early. You know, we scored first. Right. Uh, we came back. We had, had a nice uh, kickoff and, and kick coverage. They were inside the 20. Uh, we, we, we get a tackle for a loss on first down. On second down, they go back to throw. Um, and we knocked the ball out of their hand, and we have a scoop and score by James Brennan. Uh, and I think that kind of was what led the snowball to start rolling downhill. And, right. and I think I've shared on the show before that sometimes in athletics, that once the snowball starts rolling down the hill, it's awfully hard to stop. And, and this was kind of one of those deals, I think, for Apple Valley that uh, it got out of hand early, and, and it was uh, there wasn't a bunch of fight there. But again, we take our hat off to them. They came, they showed up. They sure. won their first round game against Jefferson, and it's tough to play on a Tuesday and come back and play again on a Saturday. That's a yeah. short turnaround. So uh, our hats off to them, and, uh, but we feel good about being ready now and, and taking this thing uh, to Hastings there this week. Great. So let's talk about the players of the game for last week. Uh, this week's player of the game on offense, we chose Love Adebayo. Love had over 100 yards. He ran hard and, and provided a spark, I think, early when we needed it. Uh, and we kind of, as you know, Mike, we've got a two-headed monster there with him mm -hmm. and, and, and Savion. Uh, Hart, again, we're fortunate. Both of those running backs now have close to 800 yards apiece. Uh, yeah, which to have two running backs have 800 yards is, it's not uncommon to have one over 1,000, but to have sure. two at 800, uh, still with a, at least one more game to go and hopefully more than one more game. Yep. Uh, we feel good and that there's a chance maybe to get both of those guys to a thousand yards which would be really uncommon so we feel good uh, but those two guys but would love what they get the offensive win this week defense went to Mark Rogalski the last couple of weeks Mark has stepped his game up and he's flying around and probably is as physical as the players we have on defense so he's been fun to watch these last couple of weeks and we look forward to him continuing that play. Okay, good. And do we have a special teams uh, player? You know, we haven't the picked the special teams one okay. uh, this week, so okay. we, we didn't feel like we had anybody that necessarily stood out. And 
again, we didn't punt. We kicked off a whole bunch of times, and, right. and uh, okay. so we'll we'll get back to that. Hopefully, next week we'll have right. one that we'll we'll have. All right, sounds good. Uh, any any uh, injuries that are kind of lingering right now? I know it's at that time of the year yeah. where you know people are are kind of got nagging stuff. But anything you're concerned about? Uh, yeah, we have a couple. Dylan Lynch, our center, we we kept him out last week as a kind of a precross, uh, precautionary measure. He okay. probably could have played. But he's got a he's got a lower lower leg issue that we need to take care of and make sure we're okay with. Yep. Uh, our, our tight end Jordan Wolf he sat out last week as well, so we'll have him back this week, and we expect Jordan back this week. But everybody's banged up a little bit right now, so. Okay. But those are the two that uh, I'm most concerned about. But as of right now, both of those guys practiced yesterday and should be ready to go for Friday. Good. Need them uh, sure will get yeah, on, get on sure, the yeah. Here. so uh, so what what are the one or two things you, you need to work on this week uh, as you prepare for Hastings well I've I've talked about the one already and that's the right. ball security piece we for cannot sure. afford to shoot ourselves in the foot uh, and you know this week as we think about Hastings one of the things that I get nervous about is that they have a good passing game they've got mm -hmm. what we think is probably you know the second best receiver in the conference we right. think we have the best yep. receiver in Grady. Yep. Uh, but they have a really, really good receiver, number 11. You'll see him and uh, a complimentary receiver on the other side, number six, uh, who's also very good. Okay. So we'll have to we'll have to worry about those guys. And, and the best defense uh, is a good offense. If we can have our offense do a little bit of ball control uh, this week and be on the field and keep those guys on the sideline, that'll be that'll be real helpful for us. So number one would be ball security, and number two. Again, our pass defense and tackling has to be good, and, and, right. and hopefully we'll uh, be able to control the ball and, and control the clock. Okay, good. So, so with the win, you move to to, to nine and zero, oh, and, and again this Friday you've got a, a familiar opponent. We've talked about it a little bit already with uh, with Hastings coming to Jerry Brown Stadium. Um, it's a team you defeated forty-one to seven, you know, uh, for homecoming. So it was kind of third, third or fourth game in. Yeah. Um, but this is a pretty good football team, uh, as I as I see it. What, uh, what tell us what you expect, uh, other than what you've talked about already. Well, I expect a I, I expect a much better team than what we saw in week four. I think it was. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a chance to watch them play against Kennedy in their in their playoff game. They played at night while we played ours in the afternoon, okay. um, and I think their offense is a lot better. I think they're running the ball better than they were before. Their quarterback looked better than he did the night against us, and. And uh, so I expect their offense to be better. I thought their defense looked pretty much the same, okay. but I think their offense is significantly better. So we'll have to contend with that. And, and uh, you know, again, they got some skilled players and some gritty kids up front. And so we'll certainly have our work cut out for us. I can assure you, Mike, we're not going to overlook anybody, especially Hastings is 7-2. and two. Okay. Uh, Their two losses are good losses. One of those, of course, was to us. The other was to Chan Hassan. And uh, Chan was a top 10 team for a good part of the year. They did get upset in the playoffs, yep. but uh, those are two really good losses. So you know, seven and two coming into section championship game, it's anybody's game. It's going to be the team that makes the fewest mistakes on Friday night that's going to win this one. Right. When well, you mentioned a little bit about the snowball effect, I think in the in the first game that kind of kind of happened yeah. to them. Uh, we we got we got a fast start and uh, and they just never recovered. So I, I, I would anticipate a little a little different uh, Hastings team coming coming to town. Yep. And of course they would love to knock off uh, the you know defending uh, defending section champ uh, any day of the week. So yeah, absolutely. And it's a senior team. They have a bunch of seniors on their team. And that experience makes a difference, so they'll be motivated to come in here and play well. Right. So, what do you what do you expect from our boys on, on Friday night? What do you what are you hoping to see? Well, I hope they're excited to come out and play, and that we play with intensity. And I kind of I talk about that each week that uh, we can't have a letdown, but I want to see some intensity. I want to see a little bit better attention to detail, actually, on both sides of the ball, but particularly right. ball security. And on defense, we're going to have to tackle. You know, we need to make sure that. Uh, we tackle like we did against the Apple Valley team, uh, mm -hmm. as opposed to uh, I didn't think we tackled as well against Tartan. So, but right. uh, we were better last week, and we hope to take that and, and move that one notch up. Okay, good. So, uh, with, with a, a win Friday night, uh, that'll give you a berth in the in the uh, 5A state playoffs. Uh, and not to get ahead of ourselves, we we, right. we still got to take yeah. care of business <laughs> on on Friday night. Uh, but uh, if, if that happens, when when will the quarterfinal game? The quarterfinal game would be next Saturday, and I don't know the exact date that that would be, Mike, but it would be next Saturday, okay. most likely an afternoon game, at least the ones that we've played in. The previous uh, two times that we've played in that game was an afternoon game. 
uh, and the site uh, is predetermined already. It's a neutral site, and it would be at Prior Lake. Okay. And we would play, Mike, we'll play the winner of Mankato West and Chaska, two 9-0 and teams. Sure. Uh, so, again, but that's what you expect in the, in the state playoffs. Again, we're not looking at that yet. We're not concerned about it. Yep. Uh, and I should probably phrase it as the winner of Friday night's game will have the privilege to play right. against the winner of the Chaska um, Mankato West game. So if you're if you're lucky enough to win win Friday, do you have a preference of, of who you might play based on what you know right now? And I know that's not a ton. So no, you know what? It really doesn't matter. I think if you talk to our staff, uh, either one is fine. You know, we've had two great games with Chaska. They've gotten us mm -hmm. both times. We probably should have got that second one in the state championship game. Yep. So it would be great to to see those guys and play them again. Uh, and try to, there's a little bit of a, a revenge factor there. Sure. Uh, we're a little familiar with each other, um, yep. so that's nice in terms of the preparation. The nice thing about uh, playing Mankato West, it's, it's a brand new opponent. Um, they're a one-back team, throw it around all over the yard, and, and uh, you know, so that makes the, us right. defensive guys a little bit nervous. Sure. Uh, but they haven't seen a lot of teams that play like we play, just in terms of downhill, right. come right at you. And, and play pretty physical so either one is fine and we just hope to be there and, and uh, get through Friday night and we'll be happy to we'll be happy Mike to play either one of those two teams and, and just to just to keep continue to play <laughs> yes, right? yeah absolutely. so good well let's take care of business uh, and we can talk a little bit more about that uh, in next week's show that sounds so, great coach thanks for taking some time to talk a little cadet football this afternoon my pleasure all right, so just a reminder the cadet football team will play this Friday night uh, against Hastings in the uh, section championship game. Kickoff is 7 p.m. Uh, if you are unable to attend, uh, the game will be broadcast on cadets, cadetbroadcast.com. Uh, and uh, we will also have uh, tickets, uh, advanced sale for tickets available online. Both of those links will be, uh, will be in the, uh, uh, below the video uh, when you view it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week and go cadets.